It's a girl. You were killed. Stabbed through the heart by Jin. I will give you half of my life force. That way, you can be revived. Rex. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which came out on the Nintendo Switch in 2017. I've managed to sink quite a lot of time into this JRPG recently, and I have to say that it's one of the more unique games in the genre that I've seen for quite some time. And boy is it a meaty game. I've yet to complete the game, although I believe I'm pretty close to finishing it, and I've missed out a few side quests along my journey, and I've clocked well over 80 hours into the game so far. There's also an expansion pass released in 2018, which I've yet to play as well, so you can get a clear view on how much time can be sunk into this game. I'm expecting easily 100 hours in order to complete this game as close to 100% as possible. This is a game which I definitely would not recommend for those with no experience in the JRPG genre before this. This game is very anime. From looking at the footage already, you've probably guessed that. And that carries through to some insane character designs and familiar anime story traits. So let's start out with the story. This game is set on a fancy world of all rest, a world in which has been drowned in a sea of clouds, making the only inhabitable areas on the planet to be on backs of giant monsters called titans. These ancient monsters, however, are beginning to die out, resulting in space becoming a key resource now being fought over. This world inhabits both drivers and blades. Blades are artificial weapons, which are bound to a single person to use as a weapon. Drivers are ones who use the blades. Our main character is Rex, a boy, or man, I just don't know how old he's supposed to be, who works scavenging for materials in the Cloud Sea. Through a series of unfortunate events, Rex finds himself partnered with a legendary blade, the Aegis, and must now work with her to find the promised lands, Elysium, and stop the world from plunging into chaos. So, if a lot of that went over your head, I really can't blame you. This game has a fair bit of lore to remember. This game loves to chuck you into 10 minute cutscenes which act as expositional dumps throughout the whole game. It takes a while to get into it. I found the story to be pretty intriguing, towards the latter half of the game at least. However, I do believe this game is the definition of a slow burn. The story and gameplay is drip fed to the player for a good 10 hours of the game. The character you play with I find pretty charming, however I cannot stress enough how much the English voice acting in this game put me off. <laughs> a child salvager. Jin, don't tell me we're gonna have to hire some babysitters for this outing too. What the hell? You look as much like a kid as I do, lady. The English voice cast is also not synced to the movement of the character's lips, which can be pretty jarring at times. Luckily, you're able to download the Japanese voice acting pack to play with instead, but it's still kind of a shame. I mean, every main scene is subtitled, which is great, there are so many quips and retorts during your exploration and battles which aren't subtitled. So I feel I missed out on a lot of the charm brought to the characters during my time playing, but it was still so much better than listening to the English voice acting cast. Most of them are pretty decent, but Rex and Nia, who are two of your main characters, completely killed it for me and forced me to change the language. The gameplay to me is a weird but great mixture of Pokemon and those Tales of games which are also JRPGs which some of you might have played. Basic attacking is done automatically, filling up your Pokemon, I mean, Blade's ability gauge. Using abilities then allows you to use your specials. Each Blade is aligned to be a certain element, and gameplay eventually has you working in a three-man party, rotating mid-battle between Blades trying to pull off different combos. And to be honest, that's a pretty basic description of the gameplay. The gameplay is far more in depth than that and it takes a while for it to get into that stage. Text tutorials introducing new mechanics happen nearly throughout the whole game, which helps to keep the game fresh and interesting. The also basic attacking took me a while to like. At the start of the game, it feels pretty dull and boring because there just really isn't that many other mechanics to use, so you feel like you're really just watching the character do all the fun for you. However, towards the end of the game, I can kind of see why they made that choice to have the basic attacks done automatically, and the system works to create a unique fighting experience. My issues lie with other design choices made in the game. 
I enjoy how they had the monsters on the map instead of random encounters, and I feel they were trying to truly create this open world experience by having these monsters all different levels roaming the map, which in theory is cool, however it's an absolute ball ache when you're roaming the map trying to do side quests when you're only level 30 and have these monsters like 50 plus just roaming around higher than you that keep attacking you and killing you in one hit. When a monster engages in combat with you, it sometimes takes about 15 to 20 seconds to run away even, and by that time it's killed you anyway. Thankfully respawning is effortless, with respawn points not too far in between. Which is good, because you'll be dying a lot. Similar to Pokemon, the blade mechanic is pretty addictive, with high incentives to try and unlock all the rare blades, which come with unique designs. Each party member can eventually equip up to three blades, However, what they don't tell you is that one blade is always mandatory, really only giving you freedom to mess around with two blades. Unlocking blades is done through randomly opening them through cores, so it's hard to get the right strategies that you want as well. A healer blade might be unlocked through sheer luck on one of your fighter class party members, and it feels like a bit of a waste as you have all these cool unique blades, there's only a handful that are actually viable during fights, and it feels pretty frustrating. And I'm not one to usually look up guides and tips in order to beat a game, However, this game leaves a lot for you to figure out on your own, which is great if you're happy to waste a few hours doing trial and error, however I'm not really one of those sorts of people. Things like item locations for quests or even certain game mechanics just are not clearly explained. And more times than I can count, I've had to look at guides and videos online, otherwise I risk spending too many hours just focusing on smaller things. Thankfully this game's been out for a few years now, so there's pretty much a guide for everything you need. I would say external research can be your greatest friend in some parts of this game. I feel like I've hammered on too much about the negative points and I don't really intend to make this game look as bad as what it's sounding like right now. Putting those negative points aside, it is really still a great game. Once you ignore the flaws, it becomes easy to engross yourself into the combat, wanting to find all there is to the rare blades, completing their side quests so you can learn all about them, and fulfilling numerous tasks in order to power them up. Ordinary fights take far longer in the game than normal RPGs, so it becomes essential to use correct combos and matchups in order to reduce this time. And I am down for long tactical fights, but it usually left me trying to skip past the typical fodder, because I just couldn't be bothered to sink in an extra 5 minutes for a tiny monster that's just blocking my way. It's usually not a huge problem though, as the open field maps are magnificent in size, leave plenty of hidden areas to explore. The game cleverly helps persuade you to find these areas through treasures and side quests. It's not necessary to go this deep into the game, but the side quests for me are what made this game what it is. I would say that the story to me isn't my big hook factor, and it was instead the exploration and powering up. I don't want to drag this video out too much longer for you guys, so I'll just leave it by saying that if you're an anime fan and you know your way around a JRPG, then this one's definitely a refreshing pickup. It'd be hard to find something similar to this. I would say it had replay value if the game didn't already take up 80 hours of my life. I instead feel that the replay value comes from fleshing out the game once you've completed the main storyline through all its side adventures. And during a time when many of us must stay indoors, I feel this is a pleasant way to take up a week's worth of adventure. And that's it from me today guys, thanks for listening. Let me know if you've picked this game up and what you think of it. I'm planning to get the expansion pass, so I might do another side video on that and what my thoughts are. As always, stay tuned for more videos on movies, animes and video games. Bye bye.